Uh, I think a lot of guys look at to me uh, to know what to do. And, you know, uh, when you're a middle linebacker, you're kind of like the quarterback of the defense, and you got they got to believe in you. Yo, I got so much to get to. It's crazy. I'm coming out the gate swinging, man. What's going on, Cowboys fans? It's your boy Foots here. Minicamp, minicamp, minicamp is now a wrap. And I wanted to wait because I'm hearing McQuamu's doing good things. I'm hearing Garrett Gilbert is building on his game from Pittsburgh, uh, which I thought Garrett Gilbert played well considering the circumstances in that game. I'm hearing good things about Osa. It's <laughs> it's. It's a fun time right now, man, so we got to use some of it to temper because we don't want to get too high or too low. But then, man, some of this stuff we can read into. And I got 10 observations, uh, standouts from this week's uh, mini camp. Like 10, bro. Like I, I just said I'm going ham. I, I got just informational information that I want to really talk about. I wrote, well, today I typed. Look at that. Like, bro, like. I wasn't playing with y'all like one thing about me is notes is key um uh doing your homework is key and i just think that man this is going to be a fun fun year because there's so many unknowns uh some good unknowns some bad unknowns but as i kind of set this video up you guys will see that moving into training camp and stay with me throughout the off season well throughout this not off season but off period because what i'll start doing is Previewing some of the battles and some of I did it two years ago where I did longer videos just speaking on what some of these guys could be kind of like my semi video I did one on Dalton Schultz years ago and it's cool to see what he's become so that was kind of like really cool I've done some videos and guys didn't pan out it happens that's what happens when you create content but make sure you guys follow me on IG and Twitter I've hit a bunch of you guys on IG back um, shoot me questions on there shoot me questions on here and let's continue to build this channel man and, and and build the dialogue about the cowboys but right now let's get into these these mini camp observations because i'm gonna keep it real with y'all i'm very very excited oh and when i see y'all out and about man that brings the world of joy to me like bro i saw i saw somebody i was riding on the highway on 495 and like somebody was like bro, 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 bro. yo i'll be watching on youtube i was like dog what's up homie like you know it's is lit and, and then my kids watch the show um my, my my football team i put a picture of them up now i'm gonna get them a shout out say like rappers to you like it, it's dope it's a good time right now so let's talk about it micah 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 as one draft pick is on the screen mac jones let's talk about another high pick micah 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 i started a video off with micah um it's here it's now man like it's it's happening now and me todd archer and vosh lombardi had a cool uh kind of like spar like mini sparring match on 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 twitter you guys here it is on the screen right now you guys check it out the truth is my the michael parsons era is here he's doing things he, he's flying all over the field i'm sure if you follow the cowboys you saw his past breakup and all the little things that he's doing i think that it's really cool kind of to see just how michael parsons is growing um, and just really the Cowboys are giving him the middle linebacker role and everybody is going to have to do what they're going to have to fall in place. It just is what it is. Um, Jalen Layton, Keanu Neal, Jabril Cox. It's all going to be based upon that quarterback on the field. Like he said in the interview, he wants to be that quarterback on the field. It's, it's, it's based upon him and you know, like, look at this cool exchange of him playing chess with, with, with Amari Cooper. Mate, man. Right there. You know what I'm saying? Now, why would you call me out like that? <laughs> Knowing this was going to happen. For real, though. You don't know? It's all good, bro. What you about to get, Micah? What you saying? <laughs> you losing. What are you talking about? The vet made a mistake. Oh! That's checkmate, Coop. <laughs> like, I just think stuff like that. And you could see, like, you could tell so much. Like, even in those little clips, that I think that's A1 content because you could tell so much, like, in the competitor that he is. He made sure he came back and he got his win back. Like, all those little things mean so much. 
And I just think that my, this, is, this is now really going to be Micah Parsons' defense, and we're going to succeed or fail based on his um, growth. And guess what? He may struggle a little bit early, but I think he'll always be able to get out of trouble because of his athleticism and the way that he moves sideline to sideline. Micah versus Zeke. I just got a feeling that's going to be a good matchup. Number one, because Zeke is a ultra alpha male competitor. Number two, it's looking like Micah is that same way. Like he doesn't, he's not going to want to get beat. It's going to kind of like be DeMarcus Ware and Tyron Smith. Early on, DeMarcus Ware could not be blocked by Tyron Smith. <laughs> in his in his practice. So what I'm saying is there's going to be times that Zeke gets the best of Micah. That's only going to be for the betterment of the team. Because going up against a Zeke every single day in practice is going to make Micah Parsons better. I think that's a matchup. Not really like a matchup to watch. It's so like who's going to take somebody's position. But it's just a matchup to say like, yo, like these two competing, it can't do anything but get you better. So I, I, I really want us to watch that. Because the I can just tell like, the way that Mike is talking, he's, he doesn't want to fail. He doesn't. Now, he could fail. It's every, I mean, that's, that's the NFL, but he doesn't want to. He, he's, he's taking ownership of what he does, and I like it. Curse? Running with the ones? This is interesting, okay? And this isn't the first, second, or third time that I've heard this. So, to me, where there's smoke, there's fire. And it's not like it's fire, you know. I just want to know why the staff doesn't have Donovan Wilson out there with the ones. I think he's shown enough and done enough to prove that he's a playmaker. He deserved that right. He was. Him and Diggs were the bright spots of our defense last year, especially out of our young pieces. So I just want to know what's going on. I know that, you no, know, I do know that Quinn has, a, he, he likes um, Kizzee a lot. Like, Kizzee is going to be your free. And seven picks in a year, I'm like, wow, that's pretty darn good. But that strong position I'm thinking it's no question Wilson, and I'm hearing that Curse is out there doing some nice things. So that's just going to be something to monitor. I don't know if it's a staff really has a high value on this player. I don't know if in dime or sub packages they want to get um, uh, Donovan Wilson. I don't know. But I think in their base defense has been cursed out there with the ones, and that's something to watch. Biotish is the guy. I'm hearing that Biotish is moving well. My issues with Biotish, um, Tyler Biotish, um, coming out where I think that he uh, had the strength. I don't know if he always played with great technique. He kind of lunged a lot. His pull game was actually really, really good, but I just, I didn't know how well Biotish uh, technique-wise was. It sounded like he's uh, moving into his own, and that's big because that center position is very important. I like Joe Looney. Um, I just think that Looney is always going to be like a swing guy on the line, and you need to make sure that your 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 rookie from last year developed into what he needs to be, and that's a starter. And so that's good. That's a great pick for Dallas if he can continue to build on the season that he had last year. So that that's very encouraging. Um, let's listen to this for a second. C.D. Lamb, you, Amari Cooper. How destructive can that trio be? I mean, you know, we actually left out a couple of players. You know, we got Noah Brown, we got Cedric Wilson. <laughs> uh, with them coming on the, uh, you know, coming off the bench and helping us out as well. Um, I think, you know, the sky's the limit for us. Uh, we said that last year. Obviously, we had some injuries, you know, on the team and stuff like that. But, uh, I mean, we're already running out the gate right now. And it's just OTA, so I just think it's going to be, I, I think we can explode. We can do what we need to do, uh, go out here on the field and just, you know, kill it. I just, I don't, I don't see anybody stopping us. So, I want to make this very, very clear, and I want you guys to listen to me. Gallup wants to be a cowboy, and Gallup needs to be a cowboy. Let's be where our feet are this year. Let's stop trying to trade Michael Gallup. Let's stop trying to get pieces for him. Let's stop all that. Let's stop thinking into the future. Who's going to be here? Who's going to be the number one receiver? Number two, number three. Let's stop thinking about all that. Right now, Amari Cooper's not even out there. I didn't even know he had a surge. I don't, I don't know what's going on with Cooper. And that's why having three, like three is better than one. I don't know why people want to rush Gallup off this team. I thought that that interview, like, I think that Gallup is a very genuine person. He's not Terrell Owens. He plays like him. He has some T.O. in him. You want some of the focus drops to get better. But he's a big target that, like, I want people to think back to when this offense was really stale, when Dez didn't have it going, and we didn't have <clears throat> any separation on the outside, and teams could just load the box against Zeke all game. Teams can't do that this year. 
we are going to be able to back them off in the passing game. And I just think right now, three receivers, like we have to stop thinking about it as who's your one, who's your two, who's your three. And just the coverage will dictate where the ball goes, period. And trust me, they will have to do some things differently. Matchups will dictate where the ball goes, period. And let's just leave it at that. You have three studs. Let's go play football. Let's, let's leave it at that. I'm happy that Gallup is here. He's doing some nice things at camp. Um, you hear that he's making plays. Him and Dak are on the same page. So let's just leave it there, man. Like, seriously, let's leave it there. Nashawn Wright, Kelvin Joseph, Reggie Robinson, three-way rumble. That's all I'm going to say because now I'm hearing that Reggie Robinson looks good at corner. Three-way rumble, competition, competition, competition. Bring it on. Bring on a battle royal. I want chaos. I want those guys fighting every day. I want somebody, if they feel like they got a little baby cramp and they want to sit this practice out, they don't feel like that because guess what? <clears throat> Nashawn Wright could take my job because he's playing better than me. Right now, Nashawn Wright is the guy that you're hearing out of Dallas that looks and is moving well. You do. You hear that. You hear that he he looks the part of that cover three corner, what Dan Quinn wants. He's looking the part. He just is. I think the highest upside, no question, is Kelvin Joseph. And I think that the sleeper is Reggie Robinson. So I'm very excited for that battle. I really, really am. Don't forget about Elliott, man. Like, I wrote this down, man. Like, <clears throat> I just think that... You, you heard that he made Jalen Smith miss a few times. You heard that he was able to do some things against Parsons in the passing game. Like, don't forget about Zeke, y'all. Like, I think that it's almost disrespectful to think that we want to just move on from Zeke. No, I think that Zeke is, can still be a 1,200-yard back with a great offensive line and a game plan that now forces teams to have to cover. Zeke can still pop you. He looks slimmer. He's taking training more serious. And I think this bold prediction, Zeke has two more years in his prime. We need to make the most of those two years. We really, really do. I think that um, he's a still an a, a A-list player. I do. I know everybody's on Derrick Henry and all these other players. I'm still on Zeke, and I think that our success really can go through Zeke getting 20 to 23 carries a game and getting Zach's, Dak's passing numbers down and just getting them more efficient. So I'm really excited. Um, and, you know, just, just like – one of these, I, I, I want to put this on here because, listen, don't fall for this Tony Pollard at receiver hype. He's at receiver. They're trying some new things. Tony Pollard is going to be your change of pace back, your swing pass back, and that's fine. Like, that's a role in the league now. Um, I love Tony Pollard. I was on Tony Pollard before anybody. I was. But the fact of the matter is, trying to manufacture touches for Tony Pollard I don't really agree with it because you have three studs on the outside. You have a, a tight end in Dalton Schultz who's a sure hands catcher, and you have Ezekiel Elliott. You have more than enough. The scheme has to fit. The scheme has to make sense. You have more than enough. You don't have to manufacture these wild and crazy touches for Tony Pollard. You can just do simple things like run people off and get Tony Pollard the ball in space. That's it. So don't overthink it and don't put all this value into him playing receiver. It's it, it's fine. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's a great player, but don't don't start getting crazy with all that. You have three great receivers. Get those guys the ball. And then just some cool nuggets, man. Dak to Team Jordan. I think that's a major, major win. I'm a huge uh, Jordan guy. Like, I got all these J's in my closet. Like, I love J's. Like, I really love shoes. And then Mike gets it canceling practice early. Um, letting the guy – having a team session. And then the rookies will stay – in Dallas for another week for what they call classroom teach session. So I think that's dope. And I think that Mike understands if you have solid practices, sometimes those team bonding moments are very important. So that's a lot. <laughs> but in all in all, man, I think this has been a great off season. Um, I think the competition is going to be high and that's what you want. This defense is going to be better because some of these guys out there are going to say, I'm, this is a new regime. This isn't Garrett's guys. These are new. These are these are Mike McCarthy and Dan Quinn's imprint, and we're getting rid of the old fluff. Like, those guys are really going to be pushed off the roster. It just is what it is. And so I think training camp will be fun because you'll see those competitions come to light, number one. And then number two, I just think that, you know, the deep, I've always said the defense just has to be better. This offense is what's going to win you games. The defense just has to be better, and I think it will. I can't wait for camp, y'all. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go. I'm going to try to make some things happen. We'll see as we get closer to the time because that's just what I like to do. I like to make things happen. But I'm going to be getting reports to y'all, so that's all that matters. It's your boy Foots. Hey.